We have geometry this month, so you know what that means. We have Harvey. All right, we're starting off with two cones, parallel bases. Gave us the height of the large cone, and they gave us the radii of both of the cones. We've got radius of 8 on the large cone, radius of 5 on the small cone. Our goal here is to find the volume of the frustum. That's this piece right, right down here. Wait a second. Didn't we do this problem last year, Harvey? Like April or something like that. This is exact same problem. No, no, no. Harvey, last year they just gave us the frustum. Didn't give us the small cone up here, right? We had to imagine that had to... What? No. Oh, it was there. They just hadn't drawn it in yet. Oh, this guy's impossible. Oh, yeah. Okay. Whenever he sees a frustum, he sees the small cone and the large cone, even if they haven't gotten around to drawing the small cone yet. Well, Harvey, this time they've drawn the small cone for us. Thank you, Math Counts. So we can go ahead straight in with our frustum strategy. Think of the frustum as what's left when you chop a small cone off of a large cone. These bases are parallel. These cones are similar, so we're going to be able to work with this. We have a plan now. We find the volume of the large cone, subtract the volume of the small cone. And we can find the volume of the large cone right away, because they already gave us the height. So now all we have to do is find the height of the small cone, then we can get its volume as well. What? We don't have to find the height? We can just... Oh, come on, Harvey. It's easy to find the height. It's parallel lines. we got similar triangles. That's parallel means similar. So we got similar triangles here. This height is 4 times this radius. So this height is 4 times this radius. So this height's 20, da-da-da-da-da. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're right. We didn't need to do all that because, well, we know these two cones are similar. And we know the ratio of the corresponding sides. So we know the ratio of the corresponding volumes. This radius is 5 eighths, this radius. So the volume of the little cone is the cube of 5 eighths times the volume of the large cone. And now the problem's just arithmetic. You want to knock off the honors? Because I'm not left-handed. Oh, you don't do arithmetic. All right, step over here, Harvey. Get out of the way. Oh, come on, come on. Get out of the way so they can see it. All right, good. All right, I'll take care of the arithmetic, because you know what? Having a great idea is only half the battle. You also have to have good execution. So let's take care of this. Our strategy is to start with the volume of the big cone, subtract the volume of the small cone. Small cone is the cube of 5 eighths times the large cone. That's its volume. So there's our strategy. Volume of the big cone minus volume of the small cone. Volume of the big cone, we know its dimension, so we can crank that out. It's one-third of pi times the radius. So the radius there, 32. I'm going to write that down as 2 to the fifth, because I see that 8 sitting there. I know I'm going to get some cancellation down the line. We write that as 2 to the fifth. And then we have to square the radius. The radius is 8, another power of 2. That's 2 cubed. Square 2 cubed, you get 2 to the sixth. And then we got to come out here. We've got to do some, do some arithmetic. We cube. 5, we get 125. We cube 8, we get 512. Those two numbers have the same digits in different orders. Total coincidence, but I like geeking out over numbers like that. And now let's finish our arithmetic. 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 6th, that gives us 2 to the 11th. Now that 1 there, we can think of that as 512 over 512. Subtract 125 from 512, you get 387. Now, we've lined up that cancellation here, so I'm going to take that 5 to the 12th and think of it as a power of 2. That's 2 to the 9th. 8 is 2 cubed. You cube 2 cubed, you get 2 to the 9th. And now we got that cancellation all lined up. We have still that pi over 3 times 2 to the 11th divided by 2 to the 9th. That gives us 2 squared, 2 squared, otherwise known as 4 times 387. Well, now I've got 4 pi sitting out here. And I divide 3 into 387, I'm going to get 129. If you don't see that right away, you can think of 387 as 390 minus 3. Divide 390 by 3, you get 130. Divide 3 by 3, you get 1. You get 429 when you subtract. Now, 4 pi times 129, 4 times 125 is 500. 4 times 4 is 16. 500 plus 16 is 516 to go with our pi. All right, there you go. There's the execution. And Harvey, you can dial it back in now because we're finished with the arithmetic and we've answered our problem. So take away from this, you remember we got a frustum, you just think of your frustum as big cone with the little cone chopped off. On to the next problem. Trapezoid. Isosceles trapezoid AD, BC are equal. Let's see, AB is 4, CD is 10, we got E and F down here. BE is parallel to AD. 
Now AB is parallel to ED. This is a parallelogram. That's 4. That means this is 4 down here. We've got the same game going on over here. All right, we got AF and BC are parallel. This is a parallelogram that tells us this is 4, and we were told that this is 10, so this little piece is 2. That's arithmetic even you can handle, Harvey. And now our goal is to find the ratio of the area of this to the area of the whole thing. I'm going to start off just by calling that X, because we're not going to be finding that area because we don't know anything about the height here. Now, I could make up a height and start cranking through, but that looks like work. So we're going to think a little bit first. What? I'll think back to now. Well, back here we used similarity to relate volumes. Well, here we can use similarity to relate areas. These two triangles are similar. So these two sides are parallel. The side lengths of this triangle are double the side lengths, corresponding side lengths of this. So the area of this is four times the area of that. So you just square the ratio of their side lengths to get the ratio of their area. So the area of this is 4x, but now we've still got these out here. I'm still stuck. Do it again. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's one of my favorite strategies. All right, if you use something in a problem and it gets you a little bit of the way but doesn't quite finish, try to immediately find another way to use that same strategy. Now, the strategy we used here was looking at similar triangles and relating their areas. We got lots of parallel lines in this problem. Maybe we can do it again. Look at these parallel lines. These parallel lines tell us that this triangle is similar to this triangle. So we can relate the area of BEC to the area of GEF. Now, this side length is 2. This whole side length is 6. So the sides of the large triangle are three times the size sides of the small triangle. So that means the area of the large triangle is nine times the area of the small triangle. This whole thing right here has to be 9x. That means this piece is 8x. And this piece will be 8x, too, because you've got the same thing going on over here. And now you're all set. Little triangle, area is x, and then the entire trapezoid ABCD, we just add this all up. 4x, 8x, that's 12. 12 and 8 is 20. Add that one more, we got x over 21x gives us 1 over 21. Long way. I knew you were going to say that. You know, wait. All right, what's the short way, Harvey? Think about the frustum. What's a frustum? Frustum is just, okay, I'll say it again. A frustum is what you get when you chop the little cone off the big cone. Base is parallel and da-da-da-da. What's a trapezoid? Trapezoid is what you get when you chop a little triangle off a big triangle. Oh, let's try that. All right. So we got another look at a trapezoid here. There's our trapezoid. We're going to think of this trapezoid as what we get when we chop this little triangle up here off the big triangle down here. How does that help? Well, we were told that, oh, I'll go ahead and put in these side lengths again. This was 4, this is 4, this is 2, this is 4. All right, so this piece up here, I got the parallel lines. This piece is similar to this piece. And so this piece up here, well, its side length is 4, this one's 10. So this, the side lengths here are 2 fifths the side lengths of the big triangle. That means its area is 4 20 fifths of the whole thing. So I'm going to write that, oh, let's see. We're going to call it like that. We're going to go AXB. I'm going to put brackets to mean area is 4 20 fifths the whole thing, the big triangle, which is DXC. All right, what tells me that leaves the trapezoid there is what's left from the, from the whole thing. You have the whole triangle minus 4 20 fifths of the whole thing. That tells me that ABCD is 21 20 fifths. Oh, there's that 21. You're sneaky of the whole big triangle. And then oh, we got more similar triangles. The little triangle right here, we, from the very beginning of the problem, this EFG is similar to the big triangle. It's side down here is 2. This whole thing is 10. So its side lengths are 1 fifth that of the whole triangle. So its area. is the square of one-fifths is one-twenty-fifth of the entire big triangle. And there we go. The ratio of this to this, once again, is one to twenty-one. Very slick. Frustum, what you get when you chop 
a little cone off a large cone. And now we have another look at a trapezoid. It's what you get when you chop a little triangle off of a large one.